Joining me now, John Rauschenberger. This is your family. The last time you and I spoke, I said, I hope the last time we talk, we have good news. Your dream has come true. You said, we're all in until they're all out. John, they're out. Amazing. Oh, listen, you just, uh, you know, it's like Christmas, 4th of July, birthdays, <laughs> anniversaries, all in one. And we just can't be happier and feel blessed and appreciate all the help uh, you folks at News Nation has uh, been assisting us to keep the spotlight on opening that border crossing. And now we've got to help the rest of them because there, there are 2,000 Americans there at the border crossing um, trying to get through. And we were just blessed to be in that first group. Um, my daughter's number uh, was 115. And um, it, took, it was almost a 14-hour day. They got there at 5 o'clock. And they didn't really get on a bus for Cairo until about 8, 8.30 that night. So it was a, a challenge, but they're out, and, and we're very blessed they're safe. Mm. So what is the process like, John? What did Emily, your daughter, share? I mean, how did she get that number in line? Um, we registered with the U.S. State Department when the, the whole situation evolved. You know, October 8th, we uh, registered for evacuation from the State Department. And we had very sporadic contacts in the U.S. State Department. We also registered with the, the British U.K. Home Office because her husband's a, a British citizen. And um, we heard more often from them than the U.S. But uh, we got a call um, on just uh, what, two days ago that said that we're posting lists tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. and go to the border and see your listing. And out of the first 400 listed, we were 115. So we were very blessed that we were in that first wave to get through there. Um, her husband, uh, who's a British citizen there in the picture, he's a Brit citizen, and he was not on the list. So we were told he could not cross over with the family until his name was posted. But he's a salesman, and he talked the, uh, the Palestinian side of the border to let him follow with the family, and they said, okay, we'll let you in, but good luck with the Egyptians. And I, I'm not sure how he did it, but the Egyptians let him in. So the family was able to stay together and um, um, uh, cross into Egypt. Uh, American embassy was there with the bus um, with their people and uh, they drove, drove them the six hour drive to Cairo. Uh, American embassy over there has stepped up. They put them in the Intercontinental Hotel, which is across the street from the embassy. And now they're now trying to secure plane tickets home. Mm. So uh, my daughter did say I had a very good conversation with her this morning um, at about uh, midnight my time, six o'clock, seven o'clock her time. She said the real challenge in, in in leaving Palestine, Gaza, was they have not necessarily kept families together. Mm. There were three and four and five people in the family that only two got approved. And for some reason, they didn't let the other side of the family in. So um, that's the biggest challenge and frustration for the other Americans and foreign nationals. But everyone's optimistic. It was a bit chaotic, um, but it's a, a lifetime experience. The kids will never, never, never forget. And we're, 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 they're physically safe and unharmed, but we're hopefully they don't take any lasting emotional damage from the rockets and the bombings. But if so, we'll certainly work with them about that. Yeah. Oh, boy, John, you guys are going to have quite the reunion once you're all back together yeah. again. I know uh, you've said yeah. this, how important it is, and to hear that the families are being separated, but the focus on so many others who still want to, to escape just yes. as your family was able to do. What did Emily share about the worsening conditions in Gaza, the lack of supplies, food, water, medicine, as the weeks went on before they were able to get out? She said I went from challenging to bad, to worse, and now almost horrific. She said there was no water, no electricity, no food. And when they went out to try to source water or food, um, they could not find water. So they, they had no water for you know the bathrooms and cleansing. And they were able to find a few vendors selling bottled water, um, uh, food. They were down to having uh, ramen noodles or rice. Um, the the um, humanitarian supplies, and probably rightfully so, were going to the UN camps and the Red Cross camps, which they were not near there. They were taking those uh, probably normally and, and, and should be, but to the camps where all the displaced Palestinians were, put, were, were coming down. There's no room for any more people. 
and they're putting up what almost looks like and is a, pu a pup tent or tents for people. But the, the situation from a humanitarian standpoint, because they've moved close to 500 to 700,000 people from the north to the south, and ne necessarily so because of the bombing. But as I said, she said it's almost horrific. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.